Electric vehicles, EVs, might soon be a relic of the past, thanks to a groundbreaking new zero-emission technology. Enter the compressed air engine, a radical design poised to transform the automotive industry and reshape our world. Offering unparalleled fuel economy and practicality, these engines outclass both traditional internal combustion engines and EVs while being the most environmentally friendly option available. The fascinating origins. While compressed air engines might sound like cutting-edge innovation, they actually date back to the 19th century during the Second Industrial Revolution. The first successful compressed air engine, known as the Makari system, featured a single-stage design where air expanded in one piston before being exhausted. To enhance range, air was reheated by being bubbled through a hot water tank before entering the engine. Makari engines were known for their reliability and power, seeing periodic use in trams and mine locomotives. However, the rise of fossil fuel internal combustion engines, which were easier to manufacture and more powerful, led to the decline of compressed air engines. For nearly two centuries, they were all but forgotten. A triumphant return. The 21st century, driven by the same spirit of innovation that characterized the Second Industrial Revolution, saw a resurgence of interest in compressed air engines. By the early 2010s, companies began to explore this technology again, integrating it with internal combustion engines for maximum efficiency. Leading the charge was Pcho, which reintroduced compressed air engines through experimental hybrid models like the Pcho 208 and 208S dubbed hybrid air technology. These prototypes boasted remarkable fuel efficiency, achieving up to 141 mpg. The secret, using compressed air for acceleration and starting, while relying on a gasoline engine to maintain speeds at low RPMs. Drivers could also switch between running exclusively on air or gasoline, highlighting the versatile utility of compressed air. These hybrid air pios featured a dual powertrain system, a conventional 1.2 liters four-cylinder gasoline engine and a compressed air powertrain. The compressed air system included a tank located beneath the trunk, a low-pressure tank near the rear axle acting as an expansion chamber, and a hydraulic system in the engine bay that balanced the two energy sources and replaced the traditional manual transmission. The compressed air tank could be recharged during braking or by the gasoline engine, reaching maximum pressure in just 10 seconds. Although these prototypes were not mass-produced, they showcased the potential of compressed air technology and revived interest in its development. Following Cho's lead, other manufacturers like GM have also begun experimenting with compressed air engines. Cho, now part of Stellantis, continues to explore this promising technology. The future of automotive innovation. With major players in the automotive industry investing in compressed air engines, we are on the brink of a revolution. This technology promises a future where vehicles are not only more efficient and practical, but also significantly greener. So, say goodbye to EVs and embrace the dawn of the compressed air engine era. The mechanics. The mechanics behind modern compressed air engines. Modern pneumatic engines function quite differently from those of old times. Unlike the Makari system, which was a simple single-stage engine, you see, modern compressed air engines are piston-driven like internal combustion engines or the Makari one. However, these engines rev at considerably higher RPM than their spiritual predecessors. Another key difference is the usage of springs, which are used to pull the piston downwards once the air is introduced and return it back to its original position once the air is exhausted. Another thing is that the usage of water has been completely removed in favor of normal heaters, which heat up the air at a desired temperature much more consistently than water does. However, you might ask how the initial cylinder movement is performed since there would be virtually no energy before the engine starts running. Well, that's rather simple because such engines will be connected to a small electric motor that would turn them on and will perform a similar function to what a starter and an alternator do on a regular car. This is more or less how Pyo has done it, except they used an internal combustion engine as their main source of power for the pneumatic motor starting power. The problems. The problems with compressed air engines. While compressed air technology might seem promising and tempting, these engines are not without their problems. One of the first and probably the biggest problems that you'll encounter will be efficiency. Even today, these engines remain extremely inefficient in every way possible. The future. The future of compressed air engines. With that in mind, we also must remind you that EVs had this exact problem, and look at them now. 
They have literally come light years ahead of what they used to be only 10 years ago with nothing more than continuous development, which is why we still believe that compressed air engines have a place in the future of the automotive industry. Plus, there have already been incentives to solve these issues as soon as possible. For starters, the low potency issue can be solved by introducing high-pressure air tanks, which increase the energy density of compressed air and allow the car to put out greater power than before, making it now comparable to regular high-revving gasoline engines. Two other issues are the issue of safety and range, and both can be solved with one swap. How? By creating a more rigid, shallow chassis that serves as a reservoir too. Using materials such as carbon would be ideal for this, as it would allow the car to remain light, improving range while also being more structurally rigid than using steel or aluminum. Unfortunately, carbon is extremely expensive for regular cars, which is why car manufacturers might have to go for thermoplastics, which are a solid, cheap alternative to carbon. What seems to solidify that the future of compressed air engines is bright is the fact that there have been countless other small and large companies that delved into creating one in the past two decades. For example, Engineer, an Australian company, made rotary engines powered by compressed air. This engine, known as the Di Pietro motor, has been featured on various documentary programs and has already seen some limited use with boats and burden carriers, and it can also be used in cars. Apart from this, Armando Rucci also patented his own version of the engine way back in 1990, and his prototype car managed to cover 60 miles on a single tank back then. Ironically enough, this car was practically assembled in a shed, which makes us only wonder how good these engines will be once they're adopted widely. So with that in mind, it's time for us to ask, will we see the widespread adoption of compressed air engines? Widespread adoption of compressed air engines is an iffy topic, to say the least. While they weren't as successful as Toyota expected them to be, they still are quite an interesting engineering venture. Furthermore, the generally rising interest in a more revolutionary zero-emission engine exists, because whoever manages to bring to the market a power plant that is so incredibly revolutionary will also be able to set a foothold in the world of cars. And by setting a foothold, this company will be able to become dominant over others, automatically acquiring the crown for themselves. Honestly, just imagine what the public would do if we finally got a zero emissions engine that costs literal pennies to run. Yeah, everybody would want it. Well, not exactly everyone. The truth is that oil and now lithium cost quite a lot of money and, as such, bring in quite a lot of money to a lot of companies and corporations. As a result, switching to a completely renewable and incredibly easy to acquire and produce fuel source such as literal air is sure to be quite problematic for them as they will lose the incredible money revenue that they're making now. It isn't for no reason that oil is also known as black gold, nor have countless conflicts for oil been waged for no reason. Plus, despite various patents concerning compressed air engines, some of which we mentioned, none of them have been taken seriously by any car manufacturer. This is highly suspicious, as despite research proving that this engine type would be incredibly good for the environment. The curious case of Stanley Allen Meyer, who designed a water-powered engine, only seems to confirm this, as shortly after he went public, he mysteriously passed away, and his invention alongside the schematics for it was stolen from his house a few days after that. According to his brother, who was next to his brother's side during his final moments, Stanley said that their business investors poisoned him, after which he closed his eyes and never woke up. A truly tragic case and one that might be eye-opening to some. Just show us how incredibly devoted the company is to making the world a better place. In fact, Toyota's all-new engine just turned the entire automotive industry upside down. This is because it offers zero emissions while also being very conventional and very practical. Not to mention that it is also cheap to run as well. And guess what? Toyota is far too big of a company to remain silent and intimidated by oil and battery companies, which is why this might actually see the light of day in the very near future.